Let's talk to Ivan McKeever. He's the chairman of VIA Development. So welcome to the show, Ivan. Hello, Nick. Right. Um, in a nutshell, um, you're listed on NEX. A um, few headlines I've got here. You focus on residential in Manchester, the northwest. You try to, you've got future expansion plans in Liverpool and Midlands and areas commutable into London, which I want to pick up on. You've got a market cap of six million, and that's based on a listing of a 7% debenture stock redeemable in 2020. You've recently raised some working capital. Um, what's, what's this business all about? Is it, is it easy to make money in, in property? Uh, no, it's uh, not easy to make money on property. You've got to be pretty skilled and pretty knowledgeable in the marketplace in order to make money. Pretty much in any business, but uh, particularly in the uh, in the uh, residential development world in the UK today. And so, in terms of 2018, um, obviously an environment of rising interest rates. Um, there was a very good piece in the FT recently suggesting that basically Donald Trump indirectly had a um, impact. There was a correlation with. Um, prices in the UK. Are you watching the Bank of England, Mr. Carney, at all times, working out which how aggressive UK rates will go up in the next year or three? Um, kind of, but I don't see interest rates rising dramatically. I think there'll be a uh, easing of interest rates up over the next uh, 12 or 24 months. But I don't think it'll be significant enough to impact demand in housing. Right. So in terms of the demand in housing, everyone's always told me that there's a supply demand imbalance. Um, is that definitely the case up north? Uh, well, it is, but I wouldn't uh, suggest that our business is solely concentrated on the north. I think the northern par powerhouse is definitely taking, uh, taking shape. But our business has aspirations in all of the commuter areas around London and also in the in the northwest. Um, there's definitely a demand uh, in uh, urban areas in uh, in the UK uh, for good housing and well priced stock, uh, so, and I don't see that changing in the near future. But I go through sort of commuter areas. I live outside London, and I see lots of for sale signs at the moment. And it strikes me that the, the pe what people are asking for their prices um, for the houses is not being met. So there's a, basically a price um, differential. Um, possibly, although it's, it's slightly different than our marketplace. So our marketplace is uh, building uh, properties, um, multiple unit properties to sell into investment communities. So we're selling into uh, institutional investors who are then uh, letting those properties out to, uh, to uh, families and uh, young professionals. So uh, our marketplace is slightly different than the UK residential uh, ownership market. Okay, and so which way do you see property prices going generally in the next five years? I see a steady increase in capital values, yeah. uh, but I see uh, a higher rise in rental values, uh, particularly for areas of high demand uh, in the uh, community areas and the city centres in the UK. Okay, so what's a hot spot for you at the moment, would you say? Yeah, I mean, any of the major conurbations in the UK, uh, Manchester, Leeds, Liverpool, some of the suburban areas around uh, Greater London, uh, Bristol, so pretty much any of the uh, densely populated uh, cities in the, in the UK. Understood. Now, in terms of 2018, is it more of the same? What, what, what have you got lined up for the year ahead? We've got um, a significant project uh, in the pipeline in Luton, uh, we see Luton as being a uh, underdeveloped uh, area where the market has allowed us to uh, buy uh, land at a reasonable price, 
but the opportunity we see is significant in terms of the commutability to, to London and the yep. infrastructure around Luton. So we like Luton. Uh, we like uh, areas around the uh, the northwest, around Manchester, Greater Manchester, uh, Leeds and, and Liverpool. So we see those areas as being uh, very productive from a uh, build to rent uh, pro- portfolio. Understood. And I guess this is all about employment. And obviously the UK has got, you know, almost full employment. I think the textbooks would tell us. Um, how critical is that? Well, when employment always uh, drives confidence and confidence uh, drives uh, property prices and uh, rental values. Uh, so I think employment and the current dynamics around employment are set uh, solid for the foreseeable future. Uh, I think added into that, the limitations around uh, employment um, resourcing following Brexit will only add to the uh, certainty around current uh, employment status for individuals in work uh, and also drive up uh, wage. Uh, we've already seen wage rises starting to come into the, uh, the economy over the last uh, 12 months and I can see that continuing. I can see uh, wage inflation rising above uh, general inflation over the next 12 to 24 months, which will put more money in the pockets of, uh, of earners uh, and therefore make rents and mortgages more affordable. Understood. Well, that, that number out of the US recently caused a stock market correction that, you know, they're very, very worried about higher inflation. But obviously more money in my pocket means I'm more likely to go out and, dare I say, have that second bedroom instead of just one bedroom. So in terms of the actual, the properties you're building finally, okay, do these tend to be one bed, two beds, are these standalone? How, how, what's, what's the optimum? Yeah, we're focused in on one and two bedroom apartments, uh, usually high volume in a single or multiple location. So that's where we see the, uh, the market opportunity, both in terms of capital value improvement and also rental value improvement. Understood. Well, on that note, good luck for 2018. Love to hear your thoughts later in the year, uh, given that we've got geopolitical, political, interest rate, inflation. We have so many things to take into account. Thanks, Nick. Thank you.